Jillian Westminster, and welcome to today's digital worship service. For those of you who I haven't met, my name is Catherine. I serve as the Ministry Connection Coordinator here, and I'm grateful to be with you all in this space. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, a season where we're called to be patient as we look toward Christmas morning. Like most things in 2020, this season looks a bit different, but the theme of waiting in hope, peace, joy, and love remains. Today is also the first Sunday in the month, which means we will be celebrating communion together, both from the comfort of our homes and here at our outdoor worship service at 10 a.m. So we invite you to go to your kitchen, pull out your favorite bread, crackers, and juice, and be prepared later in our service to join together in communion. It's our tradition during Advent to light candles every Sunday morning during worship. And today we have the Nash family leading us from their homes. Hi friends, welcome to our home. We are the Nash family and today we're gonna to be lighting the candles of peace and hope. In Isaiah 11, we read, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From, the, from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. Creator God, as we prepare our hearts and our homes for your coming this Christmas, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ the Prince of Peace. In a world full of unrest, may we be peacemakers. And may the light of Christ enter our homes this Advent season. Amen. 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 Angels from the realms of glory Bring your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, Watching for your flocks by night, God with us is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations. Brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations. He has seen his fatal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Oh, and infants now.
when we gather together around the communion table each and every month, we, we join together in a prayer of confession. And, and we do this to recognize that both as an individual and, and collectively together, we are broken. Whether through action or inaction, we, we take time to confess the, the ways that we've hurt others, the, the ways that we've contributed to, to pain in this world, the ways that we've failed to honor God in our lives. And, and at the same time, we're reminded that God meets us wherever we sit. We live as a forgiven people, fully dependent on God's grace and mercy. Will you please join me in prayer? Holy God, in this season of expectation, we're, we're aware that all is not right in our world in our personal lives, in our families, our churches, our neighborhoods, our, our country. We know that all is not right. Forgive us for, for, for giving in to the temptation that surrounds us, the need to be right or, or the need to have the last word, the desire to accumulate more and more when we already have plenty and the ways that we ignore the needs of others or the safety of others simply because we don't want to slow down or we don't want to be inconvenienced. God, we ask that you would open our eyes to all that we, all that we, we don't see, and more importantly, to the people we don't see. Help us to see our neighbors as, as you see them, to notice them, to lend listening ears, to, to care and to love, even when we feel like we have little to offer. God, remind us that the, the gift of presence and attention can go a long, long way, especially in a time like we're all experiencing right now. In this season of Advent where we light candles as a reminder of the hope, peace, joy, and love you bring into this world, Lord, help us to be a people who point others toward that light. We pray all these things confident of the forgiveness that you offer to us with the assurance of grace and the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. But forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During Advent this year, we're exploring what it might have looked like for the people who were in and around the home in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And, and as those people found hope, peace, joy, and love around the manger, even in the midst of uncertainty. I'm inviting us this, this season to cling to those same Advent tenets, hope, peace, joy, and love, as we look toward Christmas in the middle of all that we have faced this year. Last week, we, we talked a little bit about the innkeeper who, who unfairly, in my mind at least, sometimes gets a bad rap as the guy who who kicked Mary and Joseph out of the stable. Now, I, I choose to refer to him as the homeowner instead of the innkeeper because in, in, in all likelihood, the, the inn was more like an extended family member's home than it was a hotel. So, so today, we're, we're continuing in our, in our journey looking at who was there around the home when Jesus was, was born, but by looking at an ordinary group of people who respond to an extraordinary, who respond in an extraordinary way when they hear about Jesus' birth, starting at, at Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord uh, appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
Today, in, in the town of David, a, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in, in a manger. Suddenly, a, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and, and, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go! Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they, they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and, and pondered them in her heart. The, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the first boxes that comes out of the Rodi garage when we are setting up for Christmas in our house is the box that is full of Christmas and Advent books. Now, over the years, we have built quite the collection. Books that were gifted to us or books that were gifted to our kids, books that have been passed down from one generation to the next, and, and books that Haley, my, my wife, got at one time or another when she was teaching in a classroom. This last week, I got to sit down and do one of my favorite things during the Christmas season that we get to do here at WPC, and that's to share the Christmas story with some of our preschool students. And so I pulled out a couple of those books that were from the box in my garage, and, and the first book is the classic, The Night Before Christmas. Now, probably not the story that you'd expect to hear in church, but a classic nonetheless. But then after The Night Before Christmas, I, I pulled out the book, Come and See. Now this book, it tells the story of shepherds going throughout Beth Bethlehem and inviting others along the way to join them in and around the stable. The, the story ends with the baby Jesus falling asleep and, and everyone kind of slipping out the door and into the cool night air quietly to not, not wake the baby. And once they're outside, once they're outside, the author writes, shepherds, strangers, travelers, townsfolk, quietly in the starlight, come dance take hands and dance. Shepherds, strangers, travelers, townsfolk, common people, regular people, joyfully taking hands and dancing with one another. Now, it might not be exactly how it happened or exactly what Luke wrote, but, but the shepherds did return to their fields. Luke writes, praising God and glorifying God for all that they had heard and seen. The shepherds are an important part of the Christmas story because they remind us that God uses ordinary people all the time. In their response, the shepherds' response to God's call, to the extraordinary news that they're told, gives us an example of how we can respond to God's call in our lives today. They almost give us a template for discernment, for figuring out what God is up to in our lives and in the world. So first, for the first thing that the, the shepherds do is they, they watch. They're, they're out in the, the fields, they're doing their jobs. Now shepherding, it wasn't some sort of highly sought out vocation. Some scholars, they, they go as far as saying that, that it was an undesirable job altogether. And, and that was because by the very nature of working with animals day in and, and day out, you were seen as ceremoniously unclean. Others point to how the four Gospels paint a positive light around shepherds, citing how, how often Jesus uses sheep and shepherds as an illustration in his own teaching, calling himself at one point in, in the Gospel of John, the good shepherd. But we do know that at the, at the very least, shepherds were seen as kind of common people, just, just regular people, who, who wouldn't normally play an important role 
in anything significant. And, and while they're out going through the motions of their job, keeping tabs on their sheep, something or, or someone pulls them from their routine. They're not too busy to notice what's happening around them. Now, now the first lesson we can learn from the shepherds here about discernment reminds us to be attentive. Who knows how many nights they were out in those fields, looking to the stars, counting sheep. It it would have been really, really easy to to get caught up in the monotony of, of it all to just go through the motions and and to miss what God was doing right there in front of them. In one way or another, over the the last nine months or so, all of our routines have been completely disrupted. By now we're tired, we're weary. We've all established some kind of new routine, maybe, some some of us consciously and and some of us subconsciously. Now, I I don't think it's, it's necessarily healthy or theologically sound to make proclamations or statements about what God is or isn't doing in this season with this pandemic. But I do think that the longer that it, that it goes on, the easier it becomes to, to, to get to the place where we just kind of tune everything out and, and go through the motions. The shepherds remind us to keep watch, to, to wake up, to pay attention to what's happening. We can't afford to just go through the motions and miss what God may be up to. Next, they, they wonder. One of my favorite pictures of our, our oldest daughter it was taken when she was about a year and a half old. It was early one morning d- during the Advent season and I came out of the kitchen into the living room holding my cup of coffee to find her sitting there on the floor looking up at, at the Christmas tree, just staring at the twinkling lights. Whenever I think of wonder, especially around Christmas and around Advent, I think of that moment. I think of that picture. The shepherds, they they pay attention to what's happening around them. And then after catching their breath, they, they, they can't help but be drawn in by the wonder of it all. And as they're drawn in, we can't make light of it. They're They're terrified. As well, they, they experience awe and terror all at once. And the angel shares, them, shares with them something extraordinary. More often than not, the, the words that Luke uses here for what the angel shared translates to, to gospel, literally good news. The angel shares the gospel with them. Now, there are three titles that the angel attributes to the, the newborn baby. First, Savior, the one who delivers. An important title from the Hebrew scriptures that that would have caused any first century Jewish person to to turn their head and to listen. But in first century Greek culture, it carried a a little bit of a different connotation. It it was a title given to anyone who was important, philosophers, doctors, rulers, Messiah, the anointed one. It's where we get the title Christ. And then the third title, Lord, a word we often attribute to God today without even really thinking about it, but the word would have been understood by the shepherds to mean ruler or commander even. It's why the news of Jesus' birth was so threatening to Caesar Augustus. So so we could also translate the angel's words in Luke chapter two, verse 11, this way, in Bethlehem, a deliverer has been born. He is the anointed one, the ruler, It's not a stretch at all to think that like any good Palestinian Jewish person at the time, that the shepherds would have known what a savior, Messiah, and Lord was supposed to do. They would have known what that would have meant for Caesar as well. Caesar had recently turned the Republic of Rome into this great empire, proclaiming that he himself brought justice and peace, that, that he was even divine. He was Rome's Lord. He was Rome's savior. So the shepherds knew that that this extraordinary news, this this good news meant there was going to be conflict, a sort of collision, if you will, between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of the world. And and right right as as these normal or, or even lowly shepherds began to process what was happening, a heavenly host, heavenly host shows up 
with a song that, that had to be deafening. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. They respond to the wonder of it all by, by going to worship. Now, one of the most difficult parts for this season in, in 2020, uh, for us as a church, and really for anyone who observes Advent and celebrates Christmas, is our deep desire to come together and worship, to sing our favorite carols with one another. Advent and, and, and Christmas, it's, it's one of those times where, as a pastor, I, I just know People don't want to come to church necessarily to, to hear a sermon. They want to come to church to sing. And for some of us, that, that means uh, singing along with, with organ music or hearing the brass. For others, it's our, our favorite contemporary version of a carol that we love. And for some of us, it's traditions like, like singing the 12 days of Christmas, like we do here every year at our, our, our first Sunday of Advent. And we're going to do our best as a church to make music an important part of, of our Advent experience, whether you're, you're here in person in the parking lot or, or at home. But if you are at home, I'd encourage you to sing as loud as you can. Make your neighbor wonder, what's happening in my neighbor's living room? What's happening in, in their kitchen? Belt out those carols with Ed in the choir and Ed in the worship team. But we can also find other ways to worship. And if you need some ideas of, of what those ways might be, reach out to Ed, reach out to me. We'd be happy to share a few other ways. The act of lighting an Advent candle and reading scripture from your home, along with the rest of us here at WPC, that is an act of worship. And you can participate knowing that you're joining your whole community in that act of worship. So after celebrating it at the manger, the shepherds, they share the good news. The shepherds weren't alone in their waiting. They knew others were waiting as well. And they don't take long to pass along what they had witnessed as they go back to their, their fields. This is where in that, that children's book that, that I referred to earlier, it, it paints a picture of a village coming together for a feast, full of great food, full of, full of dancing. The celebration extends into the community as the shepherds make their ways back to their job, as they make their ways back to the sheep, back to their everyday lives. So here we're, we're reminded that we are not alone in our waiting. It's a re reality that we've been living in over and over and over again during this pandemic. And you know that slogan, we're all in this together? We're all waiting for answers, for directions, for hope, peace, joy, love. Our whole world is waiting for good news. And the shepherds remind us that no matter what we might think of ourselves or how our culture might try to define us, how ordinary we might think we are, we get to play a role in sharing the good news of Christmas. We get to. How might you do that over the next coming week? Let's pray together. Gracious God, as we wait for Christmas, our world waits for answers. As we anticipate the celebration of your birth, along with our, our neighbors and communities, we, we anticipate a day when we'll be able to gather with friends and family without worries, without fear. Lord, help us to be a church shaped by the same good news that was delivered to the shepherds years ago. May we follow their lead as we watch, wonder, worship, and witness. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Last week I mentioned that the word that Luke uses to describe the inn in Bethlehem where Mary and Joseph go is the same word that he uses for the upper room in Jerusalem. And in the same way that there were ordinary people around and in the manger during and after Jesus' birth, there were ordinary people, the disciples, around the table with Jesus during the Last Supper. 
So as we gather around the table from our homes and in person uh, later in our, our parking lot here, we do so remembering and, and recognizing that, that it's not our church's table, it's not our, our denomination's meal, it's the Lord's table, the Lord's supper. And anyone who is following Jesus, no matter where they are on their journey, anyone is welcome. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had opportunity for, for one last meal with those disciples, his closest friends, those ordinary people. And they sat down and he, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten the bread, he took the cup and he poured it out saying, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. It was much later the apostle Paul said that whenever we, we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we, we do so proclaiming Christ's death until he comes again. So friends, I wanna invite you to, to join me at the Lord's table from your table at home. Come, the table is ready. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus Behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling yeah. oh, to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
Catherine here with this week's Life Together, featuring today's special guest. It's good to be with you again. Now, we are in the second week of Advent, and we have lots of exciting events happening throughout the month of December, and we're here to share a few of them with you. Now, a special thank you to everyone who joined us for the Family Advent Celebration last Sunday. We gathered in the courtyard, socially distanced, to make Advent wreaths, decorate Christmas cookies, and join together listening to our wonderful praise band lead us in some Christmas carols. It was a wonderful event and a special thank you to all the volunteers that helped put this event on. A friendly reminder that our alternative Christmas market is happening right now. We launched last week and it will be going throughout this week and it ends on December 15th. So be sure to get your donations in soon. We have a few of our members from the mission committee out in the circular driveway this morning until 10.45 a.m., collecting your donations and your shopping lists. And you can also mail your shopping list into the office, or you can donate online through PushPay. So be sure to get your donations and your shopping in soon. And next Sunday, we'll be having a congregational meeting at uh, 10.30 for the purpose of electing our elders and deacons for next year. And so if you attend our in-person service, uh, you'll already be here. But if you normally attend our online service, uh, you can email Catherine and she will send you a Zoom link so you can still participate in the meeting. We need to have at least 50 members of the church to have a quorum for that meeting. Hope to see you there. Also happening next Wednesday, December 16th, Ed Smart has put together a digital Christmas concert with the help of many talented musicians here at WPC. And the Christmas concert will be live on YouTube at 7 p.m. So be sure to join us to listen to your favorite Christmas music. Hey, Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve <laughs> Christmas Eve is coming. We're just a few weeks away and we are celebrating Christmas Eve here. It'll look a bit different, but we have some exciting plans. We have during the day from 4 to 5.30 p.m. outside, we have a Christmas Eve walkthrough pageant type service and we'll have different people in character reading monologues from Jesus's birth and the Christmas story. If you're interested in volunteering and being in character and helping put the show on, feel free to reach out to me. And we have another opportunity to celebrate Christmas Eve. Yeah, whether or not you can be here in person or you would just like to stay in the comfort of your home, you're welcome to do that as well. We will be uh, having a, a digital online worship service at eight o'clock on Christmas Eve. And I know many of you will miss being here in the sanctuary and singing uh, Silent Night and blowing out your candle at the end of the night, but you'll have the opportunity to do that right from your home. So we we'll hope you'll be able to join us on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. Now, as we prepare for 2021, we don't really know what the year is going to bring, but our elders are doing the best they can, our session is doing the best they can to plan and to put together a budget for next year. And in order for them to do that, we, uh, we need to have an idea of what sort of income we're going to have as a church. And that's the reason that we sent out pledge cards about a month ago. And if you still haven't turned yours in and you would like to turn one in, you can still mail it in to the office. And however you can, can help us plan, that would be wonderful. If you're prepared to give an offering or a tithe today, you can do so online. You can again, always mail something into the office. And you can also text the word WPC give to 77977. Now let's join together in our closing song. Say 
was to set him for shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no Friends, in a world and in a time that desperately needs hope, peace, joy, and love, we have some extraordinary news to share. May you find a way to share that news this season, in the coming weeks, and in the coming month. Go out in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come let us adore.